Hi team, I hope you're all well. I wanted to do a top 10 books today. This is the top, my top 10 books so far that obviously I've read so far. This is probably, well, it's definitely changing all of the time. Every time I read a book, there is a chance that my top 10 could change. So this is my top 10 so far. And of this top 10, four, uh, well, four of which I have read previous to this year. The rest I have all read in this year. Uh, however, one of them I have reread this year because, well, I've reread it several times because I'm obsessed with it. So this will probably be my number one book. And the author can, must know that because I'm constantly messaging her about it. But anyway, without further ado, I thought this would be a fun little thing to do. Um, you guys can get to know me a bit more as a booktuber and... I did do a top five on my blog a while ago. I'll leave the link below because all of those books are still featured on that, um, the, from that top five on that, from, yeah, from that top five, they are still gonna be in this list. Um, however, some of them are probably pretty close to getting potentially knocked down a little bit as the books that I am reading are getting like better and better. So, um, yeah without further ado let's get into it so these are in no particular order however this first one is probably literally my favorite book of all time i recommend it to anybody that is feeling down and just wants a pick me up book um it is a part of a series i have read all of the books in the series i've read all of the books by this author by the way they are all here <laughs> So yes, this is I Heart New York by Lindsay Kelk. This is my favourite book of all time. Uh, it follows Angela who finds her boyfriend cheating in the back of their car at her best friend's wedding. And she literally in that moment just packs her, ha well gets her handbag and goes to the nearest airport, jumps on a plane to New York City. And all she has with her is the bridesmaid's dress that she's wearing. Uh, uh, Le Boutons and a handbag with her passport and a purse in it. That's it. She's got no other gear with her. She's took nothing else with her. She's just got on a plane and buggered off. And she meets Jenny, who becomes her new best friend, who works in the hotel that she ends up checking into. Jenny helps her out. She can see she's obviously in a bit of a state. She's just found her cheating boyfriend and all the rest of it. And Jenny sort of helps her get out of this slump. She introduces her to New York. She takes her out shopping. She gets her some new clothes and eventually helps Angela sort of try and get her life on track. The intention for Angela was just to go and run away for a little while and then come back maybe a week, two weeks or something. And then as the story progresses, it comes to light that there's a good chance Angela's probably going to stick around a bit longer. She manages to get a job. And yeah, it's just really heartwarming. It's quite a feel good movie and I, a uh, movie, it's a bloody book. Uh, feel good book and I end up living vicariously through Angela in all of the books each one of the books follows Angela on a journey to Hollywood uh, Vegas there is uh, Paris London Christmas and forever Lindsay is uh, currently writing the follow-on from uh, forever which is I Heart Hawaii hopefully coming out next year I think um, but it just follows Angela on a journey of finding herself, recreating herself from a boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend, away from her family and all of her friends, making new friends, just making a life for herself in a completely different city. And I'm obsessed with New York. The only reason I ever picked this book up all those years ago was because it said I Heart New York on the cover, which is exactly how I feel about New York. Hence the reason why I end up living vicariously through Angela, because I'm like, oh, this would be such a perfect life. So obsessed it's amazing you need to read it i love it five out of five stars um the next one in fact let's do my top five well they're not my top five they were my top five books and things have changed now i don't know where these would be if i was to put them in order but let's go through those first because if you've seen that post you will have seen these books on there so i'm a bit concerned because i only have four. Oh no there's the other one uh, so the next one I'm going to show you is uh, Killing Floor by Lee Child, which is the first book in the Jack Reacher series. Now you don't need to read, there is 
a lot of these books i think probably nearing 30 now than there are like nearing 20 but this is the first one and i just read it first because i've watched the jack reacher films and i really enjoyed them but i was fully aware that um jack reacher is supposed to be like 230 pounds six foot four or something ridiculous like that really tall guy really big bill uh military police officer and well ex-military police officer and he ends up just going on random trips to places he's a bit of a drifter he doesn't have a home and he just ends up in a situation in every single book obviously that's the point because otherwise there wouldn't be any need for the book but there's just a situation that occurs every single town that he ends up stopping in and he ends up getting involved somehow but obviously read watching the jack reacher films uh tom cruise is nowhere near six foot four and 230 pounds so i think the casting of tom cruise was i don't know questionable uh, however he does manage to seem to be able to pull off the attitude of jack reacher that we're looking for he makes himself appear taller by being jack reacher if that makes sense so he does a good job but it does frustrate me when i'm reading it and they make a reference to how jack reacher would look and it's nothing like how tom cruise looks so um i don't know it's one of them things in it but i love the book uh five out of five stars it's a great book and i have read one shot as well uh, no i haven't that's a lie i've read 61 hours which i also loved again uh, five out of five stars and i have uh most of the series now as well which i'm in the process of making my way through that's a lie i haven't read one of these books in a while but i, I am going to make my way through them eventually but yeah i love this book it's definitely worth picking up my dad's currently reading one of them at the moment and i highly recommend it to him i'm going to give him that one so that he can get the backstory to jack reacher but yeah uh i love those books uh, next one is how to find love in a bookshop by veronica henry i ended up picking this up when i went to florida a couple of years ago it was in the library at uh, in the villa that we were staying in which was a family villa and they had like a what did they call it like a snug if you like it's a room that was it had like a, a bookshelf in it full of books you could go in and take your laptop with you if you wanted to on holiday do a bit of work they had a printer things like that so um i picked this up off their bookshelf i did replace it with another book because obviously i brought it home but i enjoyed the book that much so i did bring it home i replaced it with a book i wasn't enjoying um so it's been a while since i've read this so let me try and remember it but amelia has, has uh, gone back to the cotswolds her dad so it starts off with her dad like s several years before maybe 30 years before buying a bookstore in the cotswolds and calling it nightingale books shop something like that the last name is nightingale i think so she nightingale 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 books why is that difficult for me um so she ends up coming back she's left to do whatever the job is that she ends up doing but she ends up coming back because her dad's really really sick he's in hospital he's not going to make it and he doesn't end up making it and then she makes the decision to um there is a guy sniffing around wanting to buy the business up so that he can knock it down and build uh, condos or something like that so instead of allowing him to have it she makes the decision that she's going to stick around and she's going to run the bookstore and it sort of follows amelia's story which then becomes a bit of a love story eventually but it also follows the story of some of her customers that come in as well and it's really really clever in the way it does that because it doesn't get too complicated and it's just a really good book it's quite heartwarming i would actually recommend reading this um around christmas time it's the sort of book you would sit in front of a fire with a brew um hot chocolate or something and the curtains drawn and the christmas tree tw twinkling and it's just a really really heartwarming book i really really love this book it's sort of never shifted from my top five top ten kind of books and i just really really love it it's so cute i adore it um the next one is when breath becomes air by paul kalanithi i should know how to pronounce that um this is a oh god i don't know if you call it an autobiography or a biography because paul has written this himself so he was a surgeon who ended up getting sick with um cancer i'm pretty sure 
So it says, that it, the blurb inside says, at the age of 36, on the verge of completing decades worth of training as a neurosurgeon, Paul Kalanithi was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Uh, one day as a tr doctor treating the dying and the next day his patient struggling to live. And this is basically just his story of how he his, how his training was going, how he then found out he's got lung cancer and how he then sort of um, went from being a doctor to a patient. And he didn't actually finish this book before he died. So his wife, um, I think it was his wife, somebody else or maybe it wasn't his wife i think she actually wrote a bit at the back but it says that the forward 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 was by abraham virgis i apologize i don't know how to pronounce that there is a little bit at the end that basically because he couldn't finish the book somebody else has had to do it i'm pretty sure his wife's had to do something but maybe somebody else that has then put this together um it is uh a heartbreaking heartwarming heartbreaking it will have you crying and it will stay with you long after you've finished it like this is a book that i read maybe when it first came out actually i think and i have never forgotten about it i have thought about picking it back up again and rereading but i absolutely loved it and very often i will recommend this to people if i realize that their kind of way their types of books are in this genre so i just think that everybody should read this really it's such a a beautiful um eye-opening a heartbreaking book it's it's absolutely gorgeous there's a picture of paul on the back um yeah just a really really beautiful book i loved this book obsessed um then of course we're going to have harry potter book my favorite is the prisoner of azkaban um because i love Sirius black there is no need for me to go into this because literally everybody should know about these um i am at the age of 28 finally coming to the end of reading these for the very first time i have just finished the half blood prince and i am about to start the deathly hallows so by the end of November, I will have finished The Deathly Hallows and for the very first time, finished all of the books. Yay. Um, yeah, I loved this one. I, it's my favourite film. It is my favourite book out of the series. And yeah, it's fab. I love it. Really, really enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed them all, to be honest, but that's definitely my favourite one. And then I'm showing you a DVD for this because I don't own the book. I am going to buy it. I listened to it on Audible literally last week. So that's The Martian, which I listened to for La La Thumb. And this is basically um, La La from Books and La La. It's one of her favourite books and she did a readathon. If you don't know about it, I sort of went on about it, but um, where as her subscribers we can get involved in reading some of her favorite books so she did a couple of videos one of them was her favorite um thrillers <laughs> thrillers of all time because they're like her favorite genre of book and then was is it thrillers yeah and then she did a, book, a video of her top 250 books as well. So we could pick out of any of those. And I went for The Martian, Stargirl and The Grown Ups. Um, but I literally loved this book um, massively. It immediately went to like my top 10. It's probably in my top five now as well. And I'm... Com completely and utterly obsessed with it. It is hilarious. It's shocking. Um, and it will have you laughing out loud. I was listening to this at work, so I had to be careful how much I was laughing, but um, absolutely fantastic. I loved it. I thought it was priceless. Um, really trying to push it onto my dad because I think he would love it. But yeah, I just thought it was brilliant. Absolutely loved it. I loved the film as well. Fantastic. Five out of five. Next is This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. I have spoke about this before. Um, I 
absolutely love this book again it's another sort of doctor book um however the doctor does not get sick this time um adam is um a junior doctor well at the time it's complicated it says on the front secret diaries of a junior doctor so the uh, junior doctors always have to record everything that sort of goes on in their daily life for uh, part of their training but I think Adam just sort of went one step further and ended up doing a diary for himself as well about how his day would go and he has since um, sort of retiring from being a doctor if you like he's not old enough to fully retire but he is a comedian as well so he sort of come out of being a doctor and uh, made the decision when he was going through all this stuff when he was no longer literally officially a doctor anymore going through all his stuff chucking it all out and came across his diaries and made the decision to turn them into a book um i listened to this on audible rather than reading it um i can imagine it's just as funny reading it but adam actually narrated the audible book as well himself so it was hilarious because you sort of got the sense of exactly how he was feeling in that moment and because he's a comedian he can just make any situation funny so um absolutely hilarious with the twist of completely breaking your heart at the end so i would highly recommend this book um very very good book there are a lot of really good reviews on the back from top people the likes of stephen fry joe brand um quite a few really good reviews um just really really funny horrifying uh sad heartbreaking just it will give you all of the feels and i highly recommend it i would recommend listening to it as well the same goes for the martian actually i'd highly recommend listening to the martian really really funny um next one is the tattooist of Auschwitz. i have done a full review on this on my blog so i will leave the link below um, we did this as when I first got involved in my book club in September. I think this was September. And um, this was our first ever read. And my goodness. Um, I read this in one day because I didn't feel like it would hit me as much if I read it, put it down, read it, put it down, read it, put it down. So I just made sure that I had a free day where I had nothing going on and I could commit a few hours to it. And I'm really glad I did that because I do genuinely believe it probably wouldn't have had the same effect on me as it would have if I'd have taken a few days over it. I've been to Auschwitz, I've been to Krakow twice, but I've been to Auschwitz once, I went uh, last year. And it is, just going is shocking, absolutely shocking. Like, um, you, you just don't really know what to say to be honest i was quiet most of the way around it just the absolute vast amount of um like huts and cabins and um the places where they would actually like um torture the people and stuff like that just it was horrific really 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 sad really horrific it tipped it down that day so i don't think that kind of helped the situation really i was just sort of not necessarily taking it in fully but at the very end of our tour our guide he was really really great he was a his english was brilliant and he sort of said to us you are now we are running out of um the people that have witnessed this firsthand are obviously passing away now and the survivors obviously are passing away now there's not many left and us every person that ever turns up there now is now a witness as to what has happened and that sort of hit, hit home for me and um yeah it was just very shocking so then i read this and as i'm going through it every place that he describes the like the places within the camp that he describes i've sort of seen them in person and it kind of makes the story a lot more real and I think there was a point at which I had to convince myself that this was actually um, not a real story, it was not true and it was just somebody's just made it up because I don't think I would have got through it otherwise because it is very harrowing it's um her horrific it's shocking but at the same time because of the type of story it is it's a love story in one of the most 
horrific times of somebody's life ever of a, this these people's lives ever they will have never have gone through anything like that ever again and it was just so beautifully told despite the actual story of, of the around the time of which it was it, it all took place and I just highly recommend I think everybody again should read this book I know I've said that a couple of times but I genuinely believe every single person in the world should read this book I think this should be a book that they read in schools um for uh, history and things like that it's just such a beautiful story about uh Lael Sokolov and he was 87 years old when Heather met Lael and ow he told her about his story and she's retold this very beautifully it's been very well written i just i love it i really really love it my mum's read it since as well she loves it she got her copy while we were in poland earlier on this year so yeah i would really really highly recommend it i am going to go on to read i've got the boy in the striped pajamas and the book thief on my shelf and i'm also going to read sarah's key because i believe that's a very good one as well and i have just stolen uh, schindler's list off my dad too so i really want to read them all but i kind of want to space them out a little bit because i feel like it might be get a bit too overwhelming if i'm not careful so uh, yes please read five out of five stars uh my next one book number nine um, is Aunt Middleton's First Man In, Laid In From The Front. This is a signed copy. The, cop the book that I, li I actually listened to this because I love Aunt Middleton's voice and he narrated it himself. Um, fabulous. Aunt Middleton was in the SAS. Uh, he was also in the SBS before the S... Uh, no, was he in the SAS or was he just the SBS? No, I should know the answer to that. He was in the Special Forces anyway, but I think he was the SBS he was in, actually, the boat service. Either way, he was starting off in the army when he was younger and then went on to the Marines, uh, was not a fan, and moved on to the SBS, Special Forces. So, and he now does, uh, he's on TV more than anything. He does uh, SAS Who Dares Wins, if you watch that, which is fab like just fantastic i really really love that program he's also done mutiny which i started watching i haven't carried on watching and i probably should do and he's done a couple of other bits as well like uh really really extreme stuff like climbing up mountains and things like that so uh he's just a genuine genuinely all-round nice guy i went to go and see him in i want to say concert but it's not like he's singing so i went to go and see him live he was doing like a tour it's since his book's been released in September, I think it was. He then did a tour and he just he stands on stage basically for a couple of hours and talks to us about his story, where he's come from. Um, obviously, 90% of people will have read this book, so they will know most of the stuff about him. But he will give you like clips from Mutiny, he'll give you clips from SAS Who, Dare Win, Who Dares Wins, and just show you what he's sort of all about and how his ethos on life is and how he why he is the person he is and the way he sort of like holds himself he's just such a such a really really nice guy that has had a i don't know maybe a strange path through life and he's now at a point where he got himself in quite a bit of trouble a few years ago and he's now at a point now where his wife and his kids are his entire life and he's enjoying being on tv with um other people who are like him um jason carl fox who is another sas guy who's who does sas who dares wins with him and a few of the other guys as well he's just a really really great guy and this book is really really good um i really enjoyed listening to it i'm not sure how i would get on reading it because there is some bits where it's very army military based and i don't know if i might lose myself on those bits like explaining the guns and stuff so i don't know but it's really really good i would definitely recommend listening to it uh my final book that i recommend i don't own i listen to it i've listened to a lot of these books um i listen to it on audible but it is sadie by courtney summers um i absolutely love this book there are trigger warnings for child abuse 
um, and a couple of others I, I believe in the front of the book I obviously don't own the book but I am planning to because I loved it and I really want to see whether the book comes off as as well as it did on audible so the audio book was narrated by several different people and um, there was a character for sadie there was a character for the guy that does the podcast there's character for sadie's mum sadie's gran there was character for almost every single there was a person for almost every single character i think narrating and it's just a very i don't want to go into it too much because i don't want to spoil it but it's just it's hard to explain but it's a book that will stay with you for a while so it's just really really well written well read by the character by the narrators the narrator that played sadie she really really got into it like i was sat there thinking i want to see the movie through this book because she would play a perfect sadie she's really gotten into the character and i just i really really loved the story um it was possibly i don't know like towards the end at the end of the book i thought i was going to feel really really unsatisfied with the ending but i, I kind of feel like i don't know it was really good i feel like there's an opening there for if it might carry on with the story of sadie but i'm not sure maybe maybe not i don't know but courtney's writing was amazing i am going to buy the book and sort of go read it again but as a book rather than an audio book and see if i get the same feels from it as i do from the audio book but if you're gonna if you want to read this i would highly recommend listening to it like massively recommend it because i think you just get much more of a better understanding of what's going on there's a podcast series going on and i just think it sort of comes across a lot better with the different characters and stuff so yeah they're my top 10 books i hope you have enjoyed this vlog if you've read any of these and you've got any notes on them you, you like even if you like hated the book and you didn't enjoy it please let me know below i'm really interested in seeing other people's perspectives on a book whenever i read a book and i leave a review i always read other people's reviews and then i'm like oh do you know what actually that makes a lot of sense i do get that um so also alongside that if i dnf a book i will then read the reviews and see what other people thought and i'll be like all right okay so they struggled up until that point it might be worth giving it another go or they felt the exact same as i am now plus some extra bits and i'm like oh well i'm glad i've dnf'd it and i've not bothered so it's always nice to know people's opinions on books that i like i enjoy or books i don't like and don't enjoy so that i can sort of get a feel for what i might enjoy more because i am still finding my feet on what kind of books i really enjoy when people ask me what i tend what i kind of read i'll say or i'll pick any book up and give it a chance but um i don't necessarily i suppose fantasy ya i don't know though if you look at this list of books like there's just a complete array different kind of books going on all the time there's just no like one i don't think there is a single this is probably the only fantasy book going on in here <laughs> because this is uh real life this is real life this is real life this is real life in fact there's a lot of real life books going on here um this is actually fantasy but sci-fi this is contemporary it's a love story this is a thriller action kind of book and this is a love story again so i don't know i don't sort of have a fixed genre that i sort of go to more than anything else um but yeah if you've got any comments please leave them below if you enjoyed this vlog and you're not already please subscribe i really appreciate it and if you enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up um thanks for sticking around <laughs>